Welcome to the Holistic Healing Experience with your host, Nicole Monier. Join Nicole on her quest towards creating a healthy way of living, sharing her learned wisdom and experience in discovering the root cause of disease, pain, chronic conditions, and trauma. Explore relationships with self and others and how to break cycles and patterns of generational dysfunction. So now, welcome the host of the Holistic Healing Experience, Nicole Monier. Hey guys, you're watching the Holistic Healing Experience. I'm your host, Nicole Monier, and we are coming to you live from Bold Brave TV. How many of you know what's in your food? And I'm not just talking about, you know, the ingredients that are on the label. I'm talking about, you know, what chemicals are in there, pesticides, heavy metals. More and more people are wanting to know what is in their food and an increasing number of people are wanting cleaner and healthier foods, but they're a bit confused because there's way too much information out there and it's kind of confusing what's accurate and what isn't. On top of it, more and more adults and children are getting sicker and sicker. So what's the common denominator? It took me 33 years before I figured out that food was creating majority of my health problems. Did you know that today over 50% of children have one or more chronic conditions, anything from allergies, asthma, diabetes, anxiety, constipation, autism, and the list goes on. Are you even aware that there have been studies and testing done on how toxic the American food supply is? 85% of moms are doing the shopping for foods. So us moms are the CEOs of our home. Tonight, my guest, Zen Honeycutt, who is a mom, she's also an advocate for moms across America and really actually humans in general on cleaning up the American food supply. She is joining me tonight and I have her bio here. She is the founding executive director of Moms Across America, a 10 year old nonprofit national coalition of unstoppable moms. Zen has three boys with allergies and autism symptoms, which greatly improved when they went GMO free and organic. She discovered that thousands of moms are seeing the same results with the motto empowered moms, healthy kids. Moms Across America grew rapidly with over 600 leaders that created 1,000 plus community events in all 50 states in the first five years of inception, raising awareness about GMOs, pesticides, and the benefits of organic. <clears throat> Zen is the author of Unstoppable, transforming sickness and struggle into triumph, empowerment and celebration of community. With a background in art and design and natural wellness, Zen brings a creative approach to problem solving and has been at the forefront in bringing awareness about the global impact of GMOs and glyphosate. She instigated the first consumer funded glyphosate testing in America. She was also the director of a short film called Communities Rising and recently launched a new nonprofit pilot program called the Neighborhood Food Network to create a parallel food system, one street at a time. She recovered her children from life-threatening food allergies, autism symptoms, and asthma. And then, with the power of community, instigated a national and global movement to transform the food supply. Zen has been featured in over a dozen documentaries, hundreds of podcasts, and media outlets. She brings to us a unique perspective on the importance of creating a parallel food system, health, and community. Zen, formerly a Connecticut, New York City, and California, formerly of Connecticut, New York City, and California, currently resides now in North Carolina. She has three sons, Ben, Bodie, and Bronson, and 46 farm animals. So welcome to the show tonight, Zen. Thank you, Nicole, for that very complete introduction. A short one would have been fine, but I, I really am happy to be with you and your guests. Thank you. And I am so happy to have you here today. Your husband actually was answering your emails a year ago and I had booked you and then 
we we needed to cancel because you had some other events you were busy and then i've been you know creeping you on on instagram and i'm like i need to reach out to you again and i'm so glad i did because now here we are and i'm so happy to have you because your message your mission the information you have needs to be broadcast like worldwide it needs to be on every platform on every tv station so i am really grateful to have you on tonight no, and thank i you want to start persistent <laughs> and making sure that i came on thank you so much right yeah yeah so i want to first start with kind of a little bit about my story i was sick my first 33 years of life my dad was a doctor my mom was a nurse i had asthma i had allergies i was getting allergy shots i had reoccurring sinus infections i had ibs i had abnormal pap smears and precancerous cells i had chronic fatigue and i had a whole host of other problems and every now and then i things come up and I'm like, oh, I forgot I had that problem. It's, it's no longer there. So it wasn't until I was 33 that I stumbled upon this integrative chiropractor who, instead of putting me on a medicine, was like, well, let's get to the root cause and then really prescribe me a whole new way of eating. And it was my first time, this was 17 years ago, that I started shopping and cooking more. And I started shopping for gluten-free foods, organic foods, non-GMO foods. And so I followed that strict for seven months time. And after the seven months time, I got off dozens of prescriptions. I stopped like, you know, being on that merry-go-round of doctor's appointments. And I reversed so much. Mm -hmm. And so then from there my my journey continued i started to get education and and now i coach clients on health and and wellness and so also what happened when i was 41 my check education that actually kind of took me up another level where i was adding in more variety more saturated fats and really really being strict on only organic and after seven months of doing that, I got pregnant for the first time in my life. And at that time I was 41, almost 42. And so it's just a testimony of how food really can change your internal environment. But in my coaching, the first assignment I give my clients is to I, I send out questionnaires, so I kind of see kind of where they're at. They're pretty in depth. And I would say 95% of the people that hire me are not eating organic when they hire me. Right. And the first assignment I give them is to watch the documentary, Secret Ingredients. Great. Which, I'm so which, glad to hear that. Which, <laughs> which you are in. And yes. so it's, it's a pretty powerful testimony that came out, I think, in 2019, because I remember I was um doing a talk here in the chicagoland area just about like food and my own you know testimony of non-organic to organic and then this came out and i was like oh my gosh this is like my story but it's like all these people sharing their own testimony like families reversing 21 different conditions just within the family and then couples becoming pregnant from changing their diet and then other individuals with you know, chronic conditions and disease just from going from, you know, the non-organic genetically modified foods to organic. So it's, it's a powerful documentary and I recommend it to anybody who's listening and going off of that, I would love if you would start explaining to the audience what glyphosate is. Okay, great. Well, thank you for referring your audience to Secret Ingredients too. Jeffrey M. Smith made a great movie and it really does show the power of going all organic and what it can do for yourself and your family. So glyphosate is what I originally heard about glyphosate. It might've been in an interview with Jeffrey Smith with Dr. Stephanie Seneff, but also definitely from Howard Vliger, who's a farmer who's sort of like a mentor for me. He was talking a lot about GMOs. He would come to Orange County and he did about 14 talks in six days. And I went to 
the majority of those in my in my area. And glyphosate is the declared active chemical ingredient. And I say declared because there's many active chemical ingredients in Roundup, right? Or glyphosate based herbicides like Ranger Pro and there's 750 other brands that contain glyphosate in it now. Um, but there's many other ingredients in Roundup that are also active, but glyphosate is the one that is focused upon because that's the one that was given to the EPA to garner an approval, right, for the entire formulation. That's one thing I want people to know right up front is that these are pesticides and herbicides, when they go get approval from the EPA, they don't have to get an approval with the whole formulation, everything that's in that bottle. They only have to give them one ingredient and they get to choose the ingredient. And the ingredient that they chose, glyphosate, happens to be one of the least immediately acutely toxic in Roundup. So the other ingredients are about a thousand times more toxic, but glyphosate is harmful long-term. Glyphosate is an endocrine disruptor, meaning it messes with the hormones in you know, animals and humans. It is a carcinogen. It's a probable carcinogen for humans and a definite or carcinogen uh, to animals, according to the International Agency for Research on Cancer. It causes liver and kidney disease at very low levels. And it's been shown to kill sperm and harm sperm in four different ways, and also to androgenize female babies in, in the womb. The mothers, when they're exposed, the babies, the girl, baby girls, when they come out, have a longer anogenital distance, the distance between the anus and the genitals. And that is a sign of masculinization. That's a brand new study that just came out uh, a couple months ago by Dr. Shauna Swan. And, and, and glyphosate does this in a variety of different ways, the endocrine disruption, but also through chelation, meaning it grabs onto and makes unavailable the vital nutrients of any living thing it touches. So it essentially, according to Dr. Don Huber, gives a plant AIDS, like it, it strips it of its immune system. And then the normally harmless bacteria in the soil then kill that plant because it's weakened its immune system so much. So you can imagine what it's doing, you know, in our bodies. And that chelation also, you know, makes our bodies unavailable, you know, not be able to access things like vitamin D and vitamin B and, you know, different manganese, iron, potassium, you know, all different kinds of minerals that we need to grow and thrive um, and for our brains to work properly, right? So um, it's, it's also, yeah, it's a chelator, it's an endocrine disruptor, it's a carcinogen, it functions in a variety of different ways. It also harms the nervous system. So I'm but, glad you brought up the point of chelation because mm -hmm. most people don't really understand that, you know, they think like, oh, I eat this food, I'm fine, you know? And in reality, what I've learned, cause I do hair tissue mineral analysis testing. And so one of the things that through my educator, copper is like the most important mineral for the body. And I've heard you discuss in other videos how what you found was that like in children with autism, they were deficient in copper. Yes, and there's so a balance between copper and zinc. Those that connection is very important. Yeah. So with with mineral balancing, with my education is, you know, give the body what it needs, it'll function optimally, but glyphosate, chlorinated, fluoridated water, Tylenol, alcohol, those things, the wheat, the gluten, they pull the copper, like you say, chelate from the body. So it's, it's depleting the body of those critical minerals that, that we need. Um, so going further on, you know, you've, you've explained like what some of the side effects are with glyphosate, but mm -hmm. why do they have it? Do we need it? Like why, why is it even being sprayed if it has all these harmful effects? Yeah. Good question. Well, <laughs> glyphosate was found to be um, a pipe cleaner, to be a very effective way to chelate that those minerals out of pipes to clean them out way back in the day. And then they realized that it kills pretty much everything it touches. So they used it on weeds and it was very effective in killing weeds, right? The, the big, big chemical companies that were previously selling their chemicals in war in World War II, they needed a new market. So they declared war on bugs and weeds and they convinced farmers that it's far more effective to spray these weeds than to, you know, till or to plow or to have, you know, labor, hand labor, labor in their, um, in their farms. So they sprayed these weeds, but then the, the crops began to die. 
So they genetically engineered the crops, like the corn and the soy and the sugar beets, to withstand the glyphosate. They found a way to do that. So they could then spray the entire crop and glyphosate would kill the weeds, but not the crop. And the problem is, is that the food was resistant, you know, intolerant to the glyphosate, but we are not. And glyphosate does not wash dry or cook off. It soaks in to the food and then we consume it. it you know, it's absorbed into the cells. And so they use it because it can be an efficient weed killer, unless you use it multiple times, multi, you know, multiple times in the year. Over the years, farmers have found that now there's, there are over 37 different varieties of weeds that are completely resistant to glyphosate. And, and that's a big problem because when those weeds take over a crop, you know, a, a field, that's it. That'll, that'll eliminate their, you know, their yield and their ability to have any, you know, production happening. So um, the overuse of glyphosate, which is to the tune of 280 million pounds a year now on our agriculture system, 80, uh, 20 million, sorry, 280 in farming and in 20 million in landscaping that's sprayed on parks and playgrounds and streets and sidewalks um, is an enormous amount of glyphosate herbicides. It's the most widely used herbicide in the world. Monsanto, the original producer of glyphosate, now DuPont, you know, Syngenta, all these other companies also sell it. But Monsanto, the, the original producer, uh, was making out of like 40 billion a year or something and profit off it, a huge amount of money and they were very powerful for a very long time. And uh, they recently, a couple of years ago, were bought out by Bayer because of the, mostly because of the pending lawsuits against their product. How many or, pending lawsuits do they have as of current? Well, they may be, they may be all settled now. They, the last count I saw was 144,000. Oh my gosh. Cause in 2019, yeah. I think there were 13,000. And then the last time I saw it was like 40,000, but a hundred thousand. So I think that's really, over 100, yeah, it's, 100 it's not, I want to say it's a good thing, but it's a good thing because that means people are actually fighting back. Yes, they are. <clears throat> and people are aware of it now. There were, you know, roundup commercial lawsuit, roundup lawsuit commercials on TV. So now hopefully more and more people are aware of it. And uh, we successfully petitioned Costco to stop selling Roundup a couple of years ago, I believe it was two years ago, but in but as of January 2023, coming up in just a month or so, um, it should no longer be in any retail stores, Roundup, the, with glyphosate in it. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for the backyard gardener, but they're still able to spray it on our food supply, and that is the biggest problem, that spraying it on our food supply is where um, the majority of the cons consumption comes from. And I want to make sure it's known that I did, I did say that glyphosate is sprayed on crops that are genetically engineered, right, to withstand it. Those are GMO crops. 80% of GMOs are engineered to withstand Roundup. But glyphosate is also sprayed on non-GMO crops like wheat and peas and beans and legumes, chickpeas, oats, barley, hops, you know, any type of grain that needs to be dry or any type of bean that needs to be dried when you, when, before they harvest it or before you, um, it's sold they are often sprayed with glyphosate as a drying agent just before harvest. So the residue levels on those crops and those food ingredients are quite high. And so if somebody is eating, for instance, a vegan or vegetarian diet with high amounts of corn or soy or wheat or chickpeas, you know, garbanzo beans, um, they're going to be eating the highest levels of glyphosate out of all of the different types of, you know, foods, diets, you know, paleo or standard American diet and all of that. So it's very important to know that if you want to avoid glyphosate and all of these health effects I just talked about, you must buy organic. It, it, it really has to be organic, especially your grains. That's, that's where you're going to have the highest uh, consumption level. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up. It's, it's scary. I, I don't eat a lot of grains. I eat minimal grains. But again, for anybody who's vegan and vegetarian who thinks that they're eating healthy, but again, the chemicals and also the point that you brought up about not washing it off, that's very powerful too, because so many people think like, oh, the clean, I don't even, I don't even follow, I don't know if it's the clean 15 or 16, and then there's the dirty dozen, but I, um, I had another colleague of mine who actually wrote um, a book and it's on Amazon and it's just about like the, the farming industry and, you know, it's sprayed, so it's in the soil so it's in the root so it's in the plant 
So it's yeah. not like, oh, you can just scrub it off the skin or peel the skin. It's like in there from like when it's starting to grow. So it's in the heat. grape and that means it's in the wine. Correct. Oh, that's that's probably yes. one of the biggest things where I have a lot of people with wine where I'm like, make sure, you know, again, I just really, I don't prescribe a diet to people. I teach them how to eat all foods, just make sure it's organic, it's gluten-free, biodynamic, mm -hmm. um, you don't have the glue, you know, even, even if it is organic, for some people, the organic and the wheat is really inflammatory for them as well. But the wine, so many people, you know, get congested or, you know, you know, the runny nose and the cough, the sinus headaches and stuff like that, symptoms like that. So, um, going to like, even just talking about the Midwest, is it true that the Midwest is like where majority of the GMOs and glyphosate are in the U S or is there other parts of the country yeah. where it's a higher concentration? No, the, the majority of the GMOs, corn and soy and sugar beets are grown in the Midwest, Illinois, Indiana, you know, Missouri, um, South, Dakota. Yeah, <laughs> South Dakota, you know, there are just miles and miles and hundreds and th hundreds of thousands of acres of GMOs grown in these areas. And they are also some of the highest, they use the, some of the highest levels of glyphosate. Now, Florida is very high as well because they use glyphosate on sugarcane fields and citrus. They've stopped, maybe they've reduced the amount of glyphosate they use in citrus because of some of our actions, testing and finding glyphosate in orange juice, things like that. But um, very high levels of glyphosate used, particularly in the Midwest. And you, you got to think it, it goes into the water, it goes into the soil, it evaporates into the air, it's taken up in, uh, in the clouds and it comes back down as rain. There's glyphosate been detected in the rain all across the United States and even into the Himalayas. Uh, there's been glyphosate detected in the tree bark of the Siberian forest in Siberian trees, like one of the most remote places on the planet. There's been glyphosate detects, detected in wild rabbits, you know, in the can Canadian tundra. So um, it is pretty much permeated many, um, probably all, you know, er to areas of our world. And um, Dr. Don Huber says that glyphosate is going to make DDT look like mouthwash. And if your listeners know DDT, it killed the, the, you know, the bald eagles and their eggs. And there was a ban on it eventually. And uh, PCBs and, you know, all these different types of chemicals, it, many of them were banned. But it, it took decades for the EPA to actually acknowledge the harm that was being caused by these chemicals. Like, and just like they're doing now, they're, they've been reviewing glyphosate for 13 years, the EPA. <laughs> And they're saying now they need another four years or something like that to review it. It's it's a it's complete corruption that's happening in the EPA. They're just simply not protecting the American public or the wildlife or mar or marine life. Yeah, no, it's sad. So I'm actually glad you brought that up because it is it's everywhere. You're saying like the water. So whether it's the chemtrails, again, I got to be careful about things I say or like you know the immunizations because it shows up in in pregnant in women vaccines. and, and yeah. they've, they've been found in vaccines as well yeah. glyphosate has been found in vaccines yeah. and, and we believe that's because the pigs eat the grains that are sprayed with glyphosate very high levels of glyphosate found on corn and soy that's fed to pigs and then the pigs it goes into their tendons and their muscles which has been found by monica kruger from germany a scientist that found glyphosate goes into the tendons and muscles and bones of animals and then those tendons are ground up and made into gelatin and gelatin is one of the main stabilizing agents of vaccines so um, we believe that glyphosate made its way in there. Also, there's uh, bovine serum and chicken serum and all these different other types of ingredients that could be the vehicle for glyphosate, because I said it doesn't wash, dry or cook off. So you're likely to find it in anything that, you know, that is related to um, monocrop GMO farming. So, yes, we did find uh, glyphosate in vaccines and we told the CDC and the FDA. And according to our knowledge, they've done nothing about it. But we, we got back a uh, hundred or so pages of emails and documents and, and somewhere to between 50 to 70% of them were completely redacted. So we don't know exactly what they know or what they're doing about this, but uh, glyphosate has, it's been found in tampons and sanitary pads. It's found in hospital gauze. It's been found in, um, you know, bre we tested and found it in breast milk in our children's urine and in tap water and in bagels and eggs, o other groups tested and found it in, you know, potato chips and eggs and, cookies and snacks and 
oats and, you know, just pretty, pretty much everything, beer, <laughs> beer, wine, you know, um, pretty much everything. And, um, it's, it's a, it's a major problem. So I'm glad that you're bringing this to your listeners attention because this is, we're talking about this, not to, you know, depress you and make you upset about everything, but just to say, Hey, look, there's a reason why we w we're asking you to eat organic. There's a very good reason why. Oh yeah. I don't have a single client that I've worked with that has switched over that has said they feel worse. They all notice improvement within weeks to months, depending on the severity of their symptoms and conditions. And then, you know, holistically, I'm also looking at other like emotional peace and stuff like that and stress, but it's, you know, my clients who maybe aren't a hundred percent compliant are the ones who don't see a difference. And I have to tell you that, you know, 17 years ago when I started, I wasn't the way I am now. The way I am now is I cook from scratch and eat organic, non-GMO, gluten-free. When I travel, I have, um, you know, a non-toxic skillet that plugs in and I usually will find grocery stores near me or organic restaurants near me and wherever <coughs> we're traveling to. I mean, I've traveled to India and I brought food. You know, so, um, which may sound a little crazy and like, I don't enjoy life, but I actually enjoy life more because if I wasn't eating that way, I'd be suffering with say IBS or like, uh, sinus problems and headaches and, you know, congestion and all this stuff. And, you know, it's, it's really for people, um, baby steps. So a uh, couple things I want to talk about that I know some people might get turned off are one, how do they avoid them? Like labeling, what do, what do they look for? And then budget, because people always say, you know, organic is so yeah. expensive. Yes. Well, I want to touch upon um, something that you said though first is about switching to organic. If you didn't, and you said something about the people who don't follow it strictly and don't go organic, they, they're the ones that don't see the full results. That's because you can't put a teaspoon of fuel in a campfire and expect the campfire to go out. You have to stop putting fuel in the campfire altogether. So if you cheat during this time of healing, we don't have to, well, I'm not saying you have to eat organic absolutely forever, forever, ever, you know, like you can't ever, um, but while your stomach is in a state of inflammation and you're going through, you know, health issues, you need to give it a chance to heal. And you do need to go a hundred percent cold Turkey organic as, as much as humanly possible. And if you don't, then you're, you know, essentially adding more fuel back into the fire and reversing the progress that you've made in healing. So that's very important. And what you want to look for ideally is if, if, I mean, first and foremost, if you can grow your own food, you know, that's organic, right. And you know, what fertilizer has been put into it. Hopefully it's maybe you've got some rabbits or chickens or something, you know, some animals on your own property or backyard that you can fertilize uh, that food with if, or compost that you get organic compost, make sure it's organic compost. Um, if you can't grow your own food, then buying organically late, you know, organically grown from a local farmer would be the next best thing to do. And you can get that from farmer's markets or CSA, or, you know, just ask around. Um, Are you familiar with farmmatch.com? Yes. Yeah, so I was just going to mention farm match. You could look yeah, up farm I, match. You could trade Matt, with your neighbors. Matt yeah. is my farmer. I interviewed him in May. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah. There's also a get farmish. G-E-T farmish as well, started by a mom and you can trade food with your neighbors. And so oh, that would wow. be the next best thing. And then um, after that, then buying food, food from a grocery store that's either organically grown or has the label USDA organic and non-GMO project verified on it. And I say that because some people just think, oh, non-GMO project verified is good enough, but no, non-GMO non -GMO project verified has mm -hmm. nothing to do with regulating whether or not there's glyphosate or any other pesticides in their food. It's just GMOs. The good thing is they do test and they do verify that it's less than, I believe it's 0.9% GMOs. Uh, and organic certification does not do that. They just don't allow GMOs. They don't test whether or not it's been contaminated or, you know, anything like that. So having that combination, right. And in, in organic, they don't allow glyphosate. So having that combination of USDA organic with non-GMO project verified on the label is definitely going to be, um, the best way to go, but there's also biodynamic, there's a uh, regenerative organic, um, certification ROC. It's a brand new one and the real organic project, 
you know, there are other labels. Uh, CCOF is a is an organic label. There's there's other organic labels too. So you just you have to take the time to look at the labels. But once you do and you find like, oh, here, great, here's a great, you know, non-GMO organic bread, right? You want it, you want to find it, then you just buy that one every time. So it's just the first few times that you go shopping. Once you throw out all the junk from your pantry, I'm a, I'm I'm a like go cold turkey person because if it's there. I'm going to be very, very tempted to eat it and we'll probably eat it eventually just because I don't want to waste it. So I have to just have that act of cold turkey. We're purging the house, get everything out of the house and then go to the grocery stores and take that time. The first time you go shopping might take an hour and a half and find the other brands, right, that you are going to replace those non-organic brands with and um, and or order them online, whatever it is you need to do. Yeah. And once once you do that, you're 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 good to go. And the money that you spend. We wanted, you wanted me to get to the money issue, right? Yeah. The money that you, the, the additional money that you spend on organic, I don't have exact numbers on this, but my guess is that you get it back tenfold, maybe a hundredfold in not spending that money on doctor bills. Yeah. I don't have health insurance. I have catastrophic. Yeah. My kids don't, oh. like, they don't have to go to the doctor or for a separate, one has a syndrome and he's, it's a separate, you know, sort of thing. It's not, a, it's not a gut issue. It's a whole separate thing. But for, for regular sicknesses, my kids have, since we've gone organic, have not had to go to the doctor. It's their health has been dramatically improved. We used to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars just on, you know, copays uh, for are there allergy visits and doctor visits and autoimmune issues, and we don't do that anymore. So um, for us, it's, you know, we can't afford to not eat organic. Right? No, I, I say the same thing. So Paul Chek, who I'm educated under, uh, one of the prereqs for a course I took with him was under the veil of deception. And it talks about the importance of soil. But I have some other numbers here that I want to share that I usually share with my clients. So organic food isn't for just rich people. One out of every four Americans are devoted to buying solely organic foods. Two out of five organic shoppers make less than 50000 a year. And one out of five have an income of 30,000 or less. Six out of 10 shop at Walmart. So wow. it's not just these rich people that, yeah. you know, it's like, it's, it's like, you know, you want that Gucci purse or you want that organic food. It's like, you'll find a way to make it work. And like you said, like, I've never once thought twice, like, yeah, prices are increasing. I'm completely aware of that now, but my, where I shop, and who I shop from is not going to change because of the quality of my life. And I'm not spending my money and time being sick or, you know, going to doctor after doctor. So let's move on to this study that you did with um, Moms Across America and you tested school lunches across the country. Can you share yeah. the results of that? Yeah, sure. Moms Across America tested 43 school lunch samples. And when I want to thank Children's Health Defense, we had the financial support from Children's Health Defense. We love that <laughs> can organization. Can you explain to the audience who they are? Like, I know who CHD sure. is, but, but they can also seek it out and find all the invaluable information there, too. Sure. Children's Health Defense. The, the president is um, John F. Kennedy. I'm oh, sorry, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And they have an amazing team. They have a Children's Health Defense TV, CHD TV. It's headed up by Polly Tomey, who was one of the directors of the movie Vaxxed. And they have this extra all women team. I think I think they're almost all moms. Many most of them are moms anyway. And um, they have headed up a huge amount, 50 lawsuits they have going on right now, and many different divisions publishing. And you know they address uh, all types of children's health issues. If, particularly toxins, EMFs, um, and um, food issues, and, and uh, also, you know, just the right to have access to different types of health freedoms and medical freedoms, things like that. So they, they helped support it. But our moms were the ones that, you know, asked their children to go to the, to the school and get a, a school lunch sample, bring it home, the moms froze it or the dads. And then they spent their own dime and FedExed it um, or sent it overnight uh, or two day to the lab, directly to the lab. So the samples didn't come to me. They went directly to the lab. And um, in a very short period of time, because we had a deadline, we wanted to get the results out for the first national um, nutrition conference that was being held, White House National Nutrition Conference. It was being held on September 28th, I believe it was. Um, 
and that was the first one in 50 years. So we wanted the results to be out by that day. And we, we, we were successful in that. So it was a bit of a rush project because people didn't go back to school until like around September 1st, right? So we had to get the samples, get them to the lab, get them, get them tested. And the results were horrific, Nicole. They were the 95.3% of the school lunch samples were positive for glyphosate and AMPA. AMPA is the breakdown of glyphosate and it's even more toxic. And just to put in that perspective, the detox project did some testing a few months before that of grocery store foods like oats and protein powders and crackers and things like that. And those results were only about 60% positive for glyphosate. So our school lunches were considerably more contaminated than just regular grocery store food. And that's just conventional, right? Grocery store food. Um, the, the grocery store food that he tested, 20% of the organic samples were contaminated with glyphosate, which is very unfortunate, but you can tell, uh, you can, and that's, I believe there was fraudulent labeling going on there as well. Um, but you can see that it's, there's definitely a huge difference between 20% and 95 oh, I want to stop you there because I've had people ask me that. You say fraudulent labeling. So then what does that mean? <laughs> like, yeah, are so what that means is you can tell from the amounts of glyphosate that were found. So there were, let's just say there were two protein powders, uh, powders or three pro protein powders next to each other on the testing list. One was conventional, one was, or one was non-GMO, one was organic and one was uh, com yeah, conventional. So the conventional had, for instance, 54 parts per billion of glyphosate in it. So did the non-GMO and so did the organic. So that means that the peas had the same level. So that it wasn't three, it wasn't two, you know, due to rain contamination or drift, it was 54. It was the same as the non-GMO and the conventional. And that means that there was a ship of, of soybeans, probably GMO soybeans, coming from Turkey or something like that. This, and this has been shown, recorded to have happened. It leaves the port in Turkey and it's non-GMO uh, soybeans, but it gets to the port in Los Angeles and all of a sudden they're organic soybeans and they're worth $2 million more for that shipment. So there's fraudulent labeling going on and it's mostly going on, people say, well, how can I avoid that? It's mostly going on from what we see in processed foods, you know, soy foods, uh, you know, foods with, you know, wheat, highly processed, you know, uh, corn and products and, you know, wheat and things like that. So if you want to avoid as much as possible, the, that type of fraudulent labeling, avoid the processed foods and go for the whole foods, you know, make your own black bean burger instead of buying, you know, a highly processed soy burger, like the impossible burger or some other type of, you know, soy processed product. Um, fake meat products are just really far down on the list for me to ever even consider purchasing. I would just buy the whole food product instead. And, you know, having a bowl of curry lentils is, is deliciously nutritious and it's not a, you know, a soy processed fake meat product, but you're still vegan or, you know, or, or vegetarian. So yeah, that the, the fraudulent labeling is a problem, but organic is still across the board in all the testing that we've done far less glyphosate contamination than uh, by the thousands of percent, you know, in most cases. So that's, yeah, so that's glyphosate. And then 74% of the samples contained at least one of 29 different harmful pesticides. 74% contained yeah. of the school lunches, other pesticides. Four veterinary drugs and hor hormones were found in nine of the samples at levels up to 130 parts per billion. And those levels were shocking to the lab technicians. They, they said they had not ever seen levels that high. And this is in the meat, right? So these were just meat samples that were tested. And um, that's why there's like smaller numbers because there weren't, there weren't as many meat, sam meat samples. And, and this is very concerning because, um, you know, our children should not be consuming veterinary drugs and hormones. And well, what, what will that do to kids? Is I'll give you an example. Okay. Yeah, this is, and this is my theory. It's my theory, but um, I think it'll make sense to you and your listeners. So I have a friend who is a high school counselor and she's been doing that for many decades. And she told me one time, Zen, our kids, these kids are just out of luck, SOL, right? They are messed up yeah. and uh, hormonal and, and like off the hook, you know, have problems. And I'm like, like, what do you mean? And she's like, Zen, one of them, 15 year old girl, was standing in the shower this morning. She came crying to me um, and she told me that um, she just started lactating in the shower. She's not pregnant. She's not on a pill. Her breast just started producing milk. 
And I'm at the time I was like, what? That's insane. Like, you know, but now that I know that there are veterinary drugs and hormones, which are meant to cause 2000 pound animals to produce milk, to cause the cows to lactate and produce more milk. Now it makes sense. And, you know, but we have to ask ourselves, what is the state of that girl when she's 15 years old and she's lactating and she's not pregnant and she's not, you know, on birth control pills and um, which wouldn't cause lactation anyway. But, um, you know, how could she think properly and behave properly in school and reach her fullest potential if her hormones are that messed up? Right. And what's happening to the boys that are consuming those same those same um, hormones? Right. What's might, might they be growing man boobs or you know, be extra hormonal or something, you know, we don't know. So um, those veterinary drugs and hormones are a serious problem for our children's reproductive organs and for their, um, you know, it may be affecting their gender identity and their, their way of thinking about sex, you know, their, um, their body. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a huge concern. And then a hundred percent of the school lunch samples contain high levels of heavy metals. Now, when you look at the numbers, you might think, oh, two or four or 16 or maybe even 94 is not that high because there's actually been found to be like 600 parts per billion in baby food, depending on if the, that food contained um, cinnamon or certain vitamins. Like there have been very high levels found in baby food. Um, but when you look at the levels that the EPA allows for heavy metals in drinking water, you're like, oh, wow, that's high. In fact, 6,923 times higher was the number found of lead in one of the, one of the bread products it was like a pretzel or a bun or something. Uh, then so is allowed not allowed. Paint. That's the thing. Lead's not allowed in paint, but it's allowed in bread and it's allowed in cookware. Yeah. Yeah. And, and food that our children <laughs> is consuming on a daily basis. So these heavy metal levels were, um, were, were very concerning. And we know that heavy metals can cause lifelong permanent damage, you know, brain damage. So, and it's very difficult to chelate these heavy metals out. So it's a, this, this heavy metal issue we believe is coming from the fertilizer that's coming from confined animal feeding operations where there's, you know, 30,000 cows in a very small feeding lot. And they're all eating this G, these GMO grains sprayed with glyphosate. Glyphosate has uh, round up the formulation has been found to have heavy metals in it. Um, and we know it chelates. So, you know, any type of grains and chelation going on there, it's going to grab on the heavy metals, right? Bring it into the foods and the grains. So that's a major issue. And then the majority of the samples were abysmally low in minerals and minerals are what is, are essential for our children's brains to be able to think properly. Vitamin B, for instance, has been found by, um, Dr. Barbara Reed Stitt, who won a lifetime achievement award and her book, Food and Behavior, The Natural Connection is one of the first books I read. I highly recommend that. And she showed I, in the- I actually, I, I got it. And you I did. Because right. I, want, yeah, I want to ask you some questions to share with the audience. Keep going because you may even answer my questions. Yeah. So, yeah. So she, she did a study, um, you know, I think it was 20 year study on different groups. One was a, a school. I'm sorry, I forgot the location right now, but it's a high school and they had 5,000 students. And while she switched out a one year time period of switching out the junk foods and the soda and all the processed foods with whole healthy foods, no soda, no sugar, you know, all of that. Um, during that time period, the dropout rate went from 500 kids out of 5,000 down to 14. And then she did the same thing in a prison. And in the prison, the recidivism rate switched. So that means 70% of the people, instead of coming back, they stayed out. Right. And then only 30 percent came back. The, the citizen rate switched. And when she interviewed the criminal, the criminals, the parolees, the serial killers, what she found that they all had in common was not their race or their socioeconomic background, as most would suspect and as major media would put out. But it was the fact that they lived on junk food. They bragged that like all they eat is, you know, soda and, you know, frozen foods that you put in a microwave and heat up, you know, those types of foods. And so when she tested them, she found they were very low and deficient in vitamin B and their prefrontal cortex is, uh, prefrontal cortex is not working properly. And, and that is um, very similar to a study out of Germany. There was a stir study done in Germany on hamsters. It was a farmer that noticed in his monocrop cornfield 
that there was a sudden depletion of hamsters. And um, he was, I guess, a very caring farmer. He called the local university and had them come out and they did a study. And what they found was when they repeated the entire environment, you know, with the same dirt, the same corn, the same hamsters in their lab, that those hamsters, uh, the female hamsters were cannibalistic. They were eating their young on the first day of life. And they, all, they tested those hamsters and they found they were completely deficient of vitamin B3, just one, one vitamin. And the precursor uh, tryptophan that helps make vitamin B3, which is, by the way, also linked to glyphosate, uh, if you talk with Stephanie Senef. Um, and so when they administered the vitamin B3, the cannibalism completely stopped. So what does that say to you about the importance of minerals, you being a nutritionist? Right. Yeah, Talk no, I like I, I started doing hair tissue mineral analysis testing in so I did my first test in 2017 because after I had my child, I nursed him till almost five, um, wow. co, co slept. So and I was just drained. And so, like, you know, the, those kids suck our souls, but it, it's in a good yeah. way. And so I knew that I, I wanted to try something different. So I tried the hair tissue testing, and after six months, my fatigue, my insomnia everything, you know, like I, all the symptoms I had were gone by rebalancing everything. And then I got my education to do the testing and I see the same thing. And I'll tell you, like, it's, I'm, I'm great. I'm so glad that you brought this up. Cause again, it, it's not just <clears throat> food with like health symptoms, it's behavior, it's choices, you know, the focus. And I, I see it with in my, I've seen it with my own transformation. I'm always my first client, but I see it with my clients that when they get their minerals in balance, they're emotionally stable. It's not like they're, you know, an emotional wreck, but they're able to make better choices, you know, and they're able to actually heal when you get the minerals you need because you need energy to heal. Okay. And copper is the most important mineral for energy. And that's like, and there's so many cofactors involved with copper, again, the zinc, the, the iron, and looking at the calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium, all that together. And then, I mean, I can see it even in my sons, because I, I do testing on children too, you know, where I have parents coming to me. And then, you know, like the, again, the parents, the moms are the CEOs. So it's like, everything starts with the mom. Yes. Because it's like she's shopping, it's not like the kids shopping. And then if the mom doesn't know how to cook, like I didn't, I mean, I knew some basics, but like, I really taught myself how to cook. I taught myself everything. My, I come from a doctor and a nurse, you know, and they're deceased long time and love them, but they didn't teach me health. Doctors yeah, well, the problem is, is that we give up that mom control that we have when we send our kids to school and they eat the school lunches and these school lunches, I'm glad you brought up copper were sorely deficient, mostly in copper. That was copper the number one so top mo highest deficiency was in copper. And I would have said this example, but yeah, we homeschool. So like we have two homeschool communities and they meet in person. One is about 150 and the other is about 40. And so I can see myself in the future becoming part of your team because they've asked me to teach like health and fitness. And even though the parents bring their food, they have snacks and like pizza day and sandwich day. And they have like a few organic gluten-free snacks, but the pizzas and the sandwiches are not. And I'm like, well, I that doesn't align with me. I'm like, how can I teach kids health and fitness and nutrition if where we're at isn't aligning? They're like, well, it's your job to teach them. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, in another yeah. year or two, I think I'll be ready for that, but go on with what you were going to say. I'm sorry. I cut you off. No, that's okay. I was just, it's just, I'm so glad you brought up copper because that is, you know, what the school lunches were sorely deficient in. And the majority of the samples were, you know, just very low in minerals and our kids need these minerals in order to grow and develop and for their brains to function properly. And I'll give you another example in schools. You talk about how your kids are homeschooled, but some, you know, most people send their kids to public school. And there was a woman who uh, was earning a very low income. You mentioned about how a lot of people who are low income even purchase organic. And this is a good example. This woman lived in Santa Ana. She was a um, Hispanic lady who had four kids, single mom. 
And she had one of her children who was about eight years old when she, at, at the time she told the story, he was older, but when he was eight years old, he was going to school and he had mental health issues and she told the school, but they wouldn't do anything about it until one day they called her and said, your son just threatened to blow up the school with a bomb and kill everybody in it. And so we need you to come get your school, your, your child and take him home. And she said, okay, but I told you he has mental health issues and I need help. And they said, okay. So they sent her to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist said, uh, well, I've assessed your son and here's what he can have is this, you know, SSRI medication. And she said that that's it. What about the side effects? And what about, you know, the rest of his life? Like, is, isn't there anything else we can do? And he said, well, have you considered the toxins in the food that you're feeding? Like what kind of foods are you feeding? And she said, you know, burritos and pizza and hot dogs and hamburgers and sandwiches, you know, all this stuff. And he said, well, if you consider the toxins in the food, then, you know, you, you've got to take a look at it. You can either give him this medication or you can feed him organic. And so she fed him organic. And within two weeks, the teachers called her up and said, we don't know what you're doing, but this is a completely new child. Keep doing it. And so at the time of the call, her son was about 17 years old. And she said, I'm calling you because I want you to know that I know that my son would have been one of those kids that went out and got a gun and shot up kids at his school. He would have been. But I found out about what was in the food supply, switched to organic. He is now a healthy, responsible teenager. He's actually helping build community gardens and school gardens. And that's not gonna happen to him. And I want your moms to know what a difference it makes to eat organic. I mean, we could literally reverse this violence, this, this, uh, you know, this wave of violence that's happening across the country if people were eating organic food and had proper nutrients in their food and they were staying away from these SSRIs that can cause, you know, homicidal uh, tendencies. So it, it, it makes a very big deal to eat organic. And I'm so glad that your, your listeners uh, have you as a source to constantly remind them of that. Thank you. Yeah. So um, that's a powerful testimony that you just shared. And I'm glad you shared that because that, that speaks mountains. So we are coming to a close on the show. We have just a couple minutes left, you know, on top of, you know, voting with our dollars, buying organic, non-GMO, gluten-free. What else can we Americans do to change how toxic our food supply is and support Moms Across America? Well, you can go to our website, momsacrossamerica.org, and join our Monday night Moms Connect calls. We have them 7 p.m. Eastern time to 7.30. And then at 7.30, we have the Neighborhood Food Network calls. And those are for people who are interested in creating national food security, health and community, you know, one street at a time and getting your neighbors together and talking about how much, how and where can we grow food on our street so that if there's a power outage or some other type of, you know, catastrophe, which people are telling us there's going to be, um, we are prepared and we have access to food locally. So we, we invite you to, you know, really create that parallel food system because the current food system, as we just talked about, is quite toxic. And we want to start taking matters into our own hands and growing our own food. So we encourage you to do that. And then also contact your senators, contact your representatives, get my book, Unstoppable. It's available on Amazon. Learn more about how to become an activist or how to, you know, talk to your family and friends about GMOs. I have a really good chapter in there about that, how to, you know, have your child eat healthy food. It's really a guidebook. So I would appreciate if you, if you purchase that book and share it with your friends and family or your library. There's, there's a lot you can do. We hope to see you on, on our Moms Connect calls on Monday nights. Yeah, no, I, well, I teach Monday nights, so I actually watch after. I'm not there live. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. well, thank you for doing so, that. So um, we got to come to a close. I This was like such a powerful and valuable hour with you. I'm so glad thank I reached you. out to you a second time. I'm so glad you were available and we made this work. And I know that people are going to walk away and be blown away by this information. So everybody listening, I encourage you to share this video today with at least one person, because I'm sure there's one person that can find information in this video, just invaluable to their life or their health or, or changes that they're looking to make. So thank you so much for your time, Zen, and being a guest on the Holistic Healing Experience. And if you're interested in working with me for hair tissue mineral analysis testing, blood panels, or holistic life coaching, you can find me at Nicole at NicoleMonier.com. You can also send me questions about today's podcast as well. Join me next year, actually. We'll be on break with the holidays coming up. 
with guest Troy Casey. He's a leading authority in longevity. We'll be live on January 4th. You're watching the Holistic Healing Experience. I'm your host, Nicole Monier. We are coming to you live on Bold Brave TV. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. This has been the Holistic Healing Experience with host Nicole Monier. Tune in each week and learn how to discover wellness from within, no matter what your age. Walk away empowered and equipped to heal holistically in all areas of your life so you can achieve what you desire right here on the Holistic Healing Experience.